Hey everybody, welcome to a new video of Amazing Max stuff. In this video we're going to see how to use a feature of the GGL material object, which is the emission input, which takes a texture or a matrix. So what is the emission texture or matrix? It's basically uh, a texture, an image, that the GGL material object is going to use in order to apply some kind of uh, color to the shape so this color is not going to be affected by the light calculation. So it's it in that is different from the diffuse input because uh, the diffuse is like simply the color that uh, the shape will have and that uh, it will be uh, interacting with the light. While the emission is simply a color that is simply applied to the shape. Okay, so it's not going to um, it's not going to uh, to be affected by where the light is. And uh, yeah, we're going to see how we can uh, apply the emission texture to the to an object, and uh, we can see also how to make it glow because since it's emission, so it should simulate like uh, the light emitted directly from the object. So it makes sense that it actually glows. So yeah, let's see how to do that. Uh, let me get rid of everything I've done until now. Uh, maybe let me first save it. Okay, so let's get rid of uh, everything I did until now and bam, let's start from scratch. Let's also delete that. Okay, so sorry, I have a bit of coughing, so you will hear me cough once in a while. Sorry for that. Um, so it's not completely from scratch because we got a JIT world, a GGL cam, and a JIT anim drive, all the usual stuff that I usually put in patches. So this already gives us a way to move around in the world using the, the camera and using the WASD keys on the keyboard. Um, okay, so let's start to patch our little graphic application. So uh, first of all, we need a GGL grid shape, which draws to game and as a shape, uh, let's say a sphere. And uh, let's say also color one 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 zero. So we want to use the zero for the for the alpha value, and this, this we're going to see later uh, why. Uh, let's actually give it a big a bit more vertices. So let's change the dimensions of the underlying matrix. Okay, you can see it's much smoother. So now let's create a GGL material game, and let's give it for example mat diffuse color one 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 zero and then let's say mat uh, specular I don't know value 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 so the diffuse light and the specular light will be um, uh, the, the diffuse light will be completely white the specular will be um, let's actually set it completely to zero we don't want any specular light okay very well and then let's set the ambient also to completely zero also the um, also the alpha value okay cool so now we can create a texture that we can use as the, the emission input so we will do that by using the ggl bfg object draws to game and uh, zoom uh, let's say five and let's say basis uh, uh, let's start with noise cell for example Okay, so then we need now a texture to give it as an input, so in order that the object can generate an image. So let's create a texture of dimensions 1024 by 1024, always good to have a multiple of two uh, when creating textures. And uh, yeah, this should be actually it. So let's connect this here. Let's connect this actually to the metro for the moment, to the bank. Let's see what we get as an output. Okay, so that's what we get. Now we could apply this texture already as an emission texture. And uh, we should see something. But first, before we see something, we need, of course, to give it a color to the emission. So matte emission color, let's say 1111. So all uh, four ones. I mean, it's completely white. Let's actually make it a bit like uh, greenish blue. Yeah, something like that. Okay, cool. So now, what, what do we got? Basically, the color that is applied, uh, mm, the emission texture. So this texture here is being applied to the object, and it's not being uh, 
uh, it's not being affected by the light, but the diffuse texture is being affected by the light. That's why we see this uh, completely white uh, um, uh, highlights here. So let's actually uh, make the color of the object a bit lower. Okay, so the diffuse now is much is much lower. Oh, by the way, I'm running on the GL3 engine, so I'm not on GL2. I'm doing the whole thing on GL3, just that this is clear. Okay, now what we can do is to use a GGL pixel to actually not don't get all the all the pixels, so all the value from this texture, but only the values that are greater than, for example, 0 0.7. Let's actually create a parameter that we will call trash. Give it a value. Let's make this bigger. And let's uh, use this value as our threshold. Okay, cool. So, cool. Now, um, the emission texture is simply formed by the pixels that pass the, the threshold. So, let's create um, a message object with the, uh, with an adjustable input so we can change our threshold here and let's see yeah okay something like that uh, let's try for example to change the basis of the ggl bfg let's use for example multi rigid okay very well so this will be the texture that we received before the actual um, filtering of the values. So if we will use just that, it will look like this. And this is the texture that we have after it, which is a bit more uh, neat. Now, as you can see, because of how the texture coordinates are for the GGL um, grid shape object, here, basically, the texture arrives at the ends. Basically, the both ends meet here. Uh, which is actually not so nice to look at. So what we can do is, for example, use the sample object with bound mode mirror and basically uh, quadruplicate this texture by multiplying by two the normal coordinates. So in this way, we quadruplicate the texture, basically. Uh, we make it the same on all four, uh, four times, basically. In this way, we get rid of this uh, un, um, unevenness at the um, when the texture coordinates end, uh, which is a bit nicer. Okay, now for example, since we actually don't want the diffuse uh, color to be on top of the emission color, we could use, uh, for example, the opposite of these values as the diffuse texture. So this is what we're going to do. So let's create another output. Let's take simply the opposite of that. So we take one minus that, and this we can use as the diffuse texture. Zack. Okay, cool. So now the the light is only going to be applied to the to the diffuse texture and not anymore to the emission texture. For example, if we make the emission uh, the diffuse texture a bit more bright, let's give it maybe different color. Okay. Cool, we can see clearly that the light is only applied to the diffuse texture and not to the emission. Okay, so pretty nice. Now, uh, let's actually get rid of those. Now, if we want to make it in a way that the emission actually glows, that the emission is actually glowing, uh, we can do like that. We can use a GGL node that draws to game with capture one name uh, nodey whatever erase color 0001 okay so we got this bad boy uh, we can use a ggl pixel that draws to nodey then let's connect a jit oops let's connect a jit gl video play game transform reset to okay so everything is gone now now let's draw uh, all these objects actually to Nodi. So all of them actually. They don't draw anymore to game, which was the original context name. But they all draw to Nodi, apart from the initial texture that this can, can still draw to game, it doesn't really matter. 
So basis we say the fractal multi-rigid. Okay, so let's actually give it this as a fractal multi-rigid as, as, as an initial texture. Okay, so now what we want to do, and this is why we use the only the we set the alpha value of everything to zero apart for the emission, is that we want to switch from that the alpha value of the incoming texture, which is going to be 1, only when we put it uh, equal to 1, um, and so in, this, in our case, only for the uh, texture of the emission values. So we can take a look at what we get uh, like this. Oh, we get everything white, because, 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 uh, let's see. Okay, okay, all right, so let's do something like that. Let's use actually this value, uh, like this. Uh, let's create a vector 4 and connect uh, this value to all the input of the vector 4. And then let's create another vector 4 and connect this only to the first three, because this we want the alpha to be kept at zero. So, oh well, I think it was only a bug. In fact, when I closed and reopened the patch, uh, it was actually working. So let's take a look, as I was saying, with the GTPL, uh, GTP window. Here we get the wall image. Here we get only... should actually get the inverse of that. So here we should get actually the inverse of that. Ah, by the way, I substituted the... Um, the metro here with the, a lot bang because we don't need to render this texture every frame so actually only once or when we change some parameter here okay now that's actually okay because uh, we see that uh, our emission values are the one colored in white and the diffuse value are actually colored in black so this is perfectly fine because then when we multiply the alpha value for the image we get only uh, the emission value output, right? So we're actually going to use this as the output too. So now we have on this side the normal image, so the, the image without any effect applied, and on this we have uh, only the emission color. So why do we do that? Because in this way, we can use, for example, something called uh, GGL slab gauss 6x, which takes an input. So it it reads uh, the gauss the gaussian uh, shader inside, takes uh, an image as an input. Then we can sum these two images. So this basically blurs the image, as you can see. You can actually take a look with the GP window. So it blurs the image, and then we can sum the blurred image to the current image. So we have to give it a number here, which is the, basically the width of the of the blur. So and if we sum uh, these two images together, we actually get the effect of a bloom. Uh, no. <laughs> It's not so easy because we first need to, uh, every time we go full screen, we basically need to bang this texture, otherwise it will uh, just disappear. This, I think it's a little bug of max, but uh, in order to do that, we can simply root the init message from the JIT world object. So every time we go full screen, this, uh, uh, the JIT world uh, outputs a message uh, init. And now we can, and this, if we root the init, it will give us a bang. So we can delay this bang uh, some milliseconds, and then we can attach it here. So, okay, now it works. So as you can see, we get a little uh, blooming effect, only on the emission value. Cool. Uh, let's delete a couple of textures, which we don't need. Okay, it's basically it. If we want, we can also multiply this by, for example, a small value in order to give it a bit more presence. And we can also play a bit around with, uh, with the width value in order to have a glow uh, with uh, glows uh, farther from the surface or, or closer. 
So, for example, it's better to appreciate that, uh, yeah, when we go also full screen. One, it's, it's pretty good value. And then we can, of course, change the value of the diffuse and emission color from the GGL uh, material object. For example, uh, we can give it uh, we can give it a dark blue value. Then we can change the matte emission. For example, to red or light or orange. Okay, so here we have really the effect of glowing. Uh, we can apply basically everything as a texture. I just use some noise because it's just handy to have it there. So, for example, we can also do something like that. Connect this here. Every time we change the threshold, we rebang the texture, so we get real time. We can see the change. If we want to apply also another little effect, we can also do something like that. Get another JIT GL Pix here. In order to apply the effect of uh, kind of the light remaining on the on the retina of the eyes, we can use a little uh, feedback only on the emission value. So we can use here GGL texture node. And up the one, so be sure that it gets the same dimensions of the input matrix. Then we do that and that. Okay. Then of course we need to multiply it for something smaller, like for example 0 0.7. Okay, maybe it's a bit too much. Okay. Can even uh, not multiply then here. So in this way, okay, now when we move, we have kind of these uh, uh, blooming effect that kind of remains. Let's change this color, it's not so sh beautiful. Oh, I think it's crashing. Yes. Yes, it crashed. Sometimes when you go a bit too much full screen and, uh, and uh, not full screen, then it crashes. So let's actually put a lot mess one here for the wheat. Okay, very well. Uh, so we were saying we can use uh, uh, an emission, for example, red. Seems to be working pretty well with this color. Yeah, okay, so this is it. If you want to have more objects, just the... Uh, oh man, it's crashing again. So yeah, if you want to have more objects, you just uh, connect more objects to the same GGL material or create different material to have different colors. You can, of course, change the, um, change the, the texture here and use another one. Uh, let's actually also create a zoom value. For the zoom of the texture, of course, with a bang as well. Okay, pretty nice. Pretty nice. So, so we can have some interesting effects uh, just simply using the emission value, uh, the emission input, and the diffuse input of the GGL material. So, GGL material is really a nice object that we can use for a lot of different effects. Okay, so this is going to be it. I uh, hope this was useful. If you have any question, you can ask me, of course. If you want to support me and get a lot of other patches, uh, you can uh, check my Patreon and support me there. And uh, if you could subscribe to the channel, this would be really great. If you already are, uh, thank you very much. This really helps me. So, this was it. Stay healthy and uh, see you in the next video. Ciao.